Humana Inc. missed estimates dramatically for the fourth quarter of last year, and analysts have now cut their forecast for 2024 virtually in half. What could have happened to this well-thought-of managed healthcare company? Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the fundamentals analyzer software tool, aka Mr. Valuation. Today's video, I'm going to look at Yamana. It's actually a subscriber request, and I don't often get the opportunity to do subscriber requests. Frankly, there's just too many of them. But when I do get a request that interests me, then I do try to incorporate it into my videos. And I was asked to cover Yamana recently in one of my more recent videos. And Yamana is a very interesting stock that we're going to look at here. But before we get into Yamana, let's go ahead and get into the FastGraphs Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. And let's look at the four major managed healthcare companies with Yamana being the last so we can kind of compare them because Yamana was the only one in this subsector that really had the struggles and the problems that they reported. So going to the FastGraphs Fundamental Analyzer software tool, I created a portfolio uh, called Managed Healthcare, where I covered the four leading U.S. healthcare companies. As you can see, all of them are investment-grade rated. Um, Yamana's triple B, which is one notch above triple B minus, which is the bottom of the investment-grade sector. United Healthcare, the giant in the industry, is A plus rated, and Elevance is A rated. Now, for disclosure, I have a rather large position in Elevance Health but I do not have positions in any of the other three. So I'm going to start here. Let's start by looking at United Healthcare first. The reason I want to look at United Healthcare first is besides the fact that they're the largest and perhaps the highest quality, I want you to look at the operating earnings per share of this company. One of the great benefits of Fast Graphs is that it really gives you a lot of insight into how the company that you are going to invest in has really been managed over time. And when you look here at United Healthcare, and at this point, I'm only looking at earnings per share. The orange line on the graph represents earnings per share going back starting at the beginning of 2004, the ending of 2003. What you see here is consistent double-digit earnings growth averaging 14.82%. And I want you to note the consistency. During the Great Recession of 08 and 09, the company did see earnings drop 31%. But even during that period of time, they were able to maintain their dividend, although they paid a very small portion of their earnings in dividends back at that time. You can see that the dividend payout ratio didn't really start to increase in a meaningful way to about 2012 or so. But then they've kind of kept their payout ratio growing, and it's now currently at almost 29%. Last year, the payout ratio was a flat 29%. is expected to continue at that level. Now, I want you to note at the consistency of the earnings here. Now, you can see the rate of change of earnings growth between each year. So they have some good years where they have earnings growth of 35%, 27%. That was, of course, coming off of the drop in earnings in 08. But then they also have some rather modest years where earnings only grew at 4%. But then most of the time, they have ended up with double-digit earnings growth, as you can see. Now, when I put weekly closing stock prices on the graph, I want you to note that stock prices track those earnings. And here, the P-E ratio of this orange line, which represents our intrinsic value or fair value line, is a 15 P-E. And you can see that's been a very profound price-earnings ratio for this stock as far as buying it at good value. Now, even though the P-E ratio got high here coming starting in 2015, where we've had this incredible bull market that we've been experiencing, and if I add the normal P-E ratio, you see that the market start pricing this at closer to 18 times earnings and even higher. But note when the price-earnings ratio really got up into the almost 30, 27 here, that we've had really a flatness in the stock price. And the reason I mention that is because we still had very robust earnings growth during this time. But the problem is the headwinds of overvaluation have seemed to have caught up and the stock was starting to recover. But nevertheless, the company did have a really strong earnings report in the fourth quarter of last year in contrast to the others. Now, the next one I want to look at, I do want to look at Centene Corporation. Now, we have a little different picture here. Centene Corporation does not have the consistency of earnings growth. But in the last several years, the earnings growth has been very consistent and has also averaged double-digit rates. But I want you to note there's no dividend on Centene. And if I put the price on the graph, once again, you see how the price tracks 
earnings justified valuation line of 15. And when it gets below it, it tends to come back to the orange line. And it does this over and over and over again. But Centene is the only one in the group that does not pay a dividend. Next, I want to look at Elevance, which is for disclosure, our money management firm does have a rather substantial position in Elevance, and we really like this stock. But again, I want you to note the consistency of the earnings growth and also the tight range of valuation. You know, if I put weekly closing stock prices, the market pretty much values this at around a 15 PE. Once again, Stock prices will always be volatile. They'll get a little overvalued. It comes back to the orange line. Gets a little undervalued. It comes back to the orange line, and so on and so forth. During COVID, we saw you know a big drop in the stock price. We saw nothing bad happening to earnings, and they also reported a fourth quarter number for 2023 fiscal 2023 that was on the mark and really good. And so we had no stress, if you will, in elevates. But what I really want you to notice about Elevance and United Healthcare is how consistently they've produced strong earnings growth year after year after year. Now let's go ahead and go into the stock that we're actually featuring today, and let's look at Yamana. Now, a couple of things about Yamana. If I scroll back the last year, it's a lot more, I'll call it moderately cyclical than the other two I showed you. It is a strong company. They have had 15% growth up through 2023. But there were times when their earnings dropped. So that we don't see management team here that seems to be as consistent as we did with United Healthcare and Elevance. Okay, but it still produced a very excellent long-term record. When you put price on the graph, once again, you see how stock price tracks earnings. And with fast graphs, you get a very visible reflection of when you're paying a very high value for a stock and whether you're also paying a very low value for a stock. And obviously, when you buy any stock at a low value, and if you get fortunate to go into high value, you can make incredible rates of return. Here from the period of May 22nd, 2009 to November 16th, 2018, we'd have averaged 28.5% a year on our stock. Now, they started paying a dividend in 2011, and they still have a very low dividend payout ratio, and it's a relatively low-yielding stock with a 1% current yield, and it's currently trading at a PE of 14.31. So let's go ahead and update this to current. Now, what happened was in 2024, they really had a big miss in the quarter. Now, I have a good friend named Brad Thomas. Many of you follow Brad's work, I know. And Brad did a, a recent article, actually it was in January of this year, on Yamana, and he was excited about the company. It did have a very good looking track record, but their quarter four results fell well short of consensus and guidance. And what they've done now, the analysts have cut the earnings estimates significantly for 2024. And all this led to an 11% drop in the stock. Analysts were surprised by this big earnings per share miss, and I'm going to talk about that here more. And the lowered guidance is other Medicare Advantage providers, like I just showed you with United Healthcare and Elevance, they maintained their guidance and also met their earnings estimates and actually they had really good years. Okay, so what happened to Yamana? Well, the company itself, Yamana's management, blamed it on extensive utilization and increased medical costs as being the primary factors for the poor earnings. But it's unusual in that it didn't seem to affect the other major managed care companies, as I've already shown you. But Yamana clearly did. And then earnings forecasts for this coming year are, have dropped significantly, and this created a big downdraft in the stock. Now, by looking at this fast graph, assuming these estimates turn out to be right, this light green shaded area, I want you to understand this forecast, it could very well be that we're looking at a further deterioration in the company's stock price. On the other hand, you could also argue that a strong company and management really does believe in what they're doing. Now, you can go into other research services here through fast graphs, go into the external links, and we can go into Morningstar very quickly. And Morningstar did talk about the fact that Yamanda's mispriced plans cut into their fair value estimate and their capital allocation rating. So management did blow it with terms of pricing their plans. But there was also this increased utilization, weak pricing that really caused many of the areas or the errors in their forecasts. And the bulls say, according to Morningstar, with its proudness in Medicare Advantage plan, Jumana looks likely to benefit from strong demographic trends and increasing popularity of their program in the long run. Bears say healthcare policy changes may remain a key threat to private insurers like Humana until affordable universal medical coverage. And you can go into Morningstar yourself and read more. But here's the point I want to make. 
let's go into the forecasting calculators now on Yamana. And I want you to note that you know, analysts were forecasting 2023 pretty accurately. They thought it was going to be $28.26 six months ago. And then they had it up to 28.28. And then because of the bad fourth quarter, it actually came in at 26.09, which was a miss. But here's the big rub. Now analysts are forecasting a $16 estimate for 2024. Now, it wasn't six months ago they were saying $32. So analysts were really blindsided by the company and the management themselves acted like they were kind of surprised at this. But I think it really comes down to the fact that they mispriced it. Now, analysts have obviously not given up on this company. We have very strong earnings estimates going into 2025 and 2026, but they both of the cases, they're lower than they were six months ago. Okay, I do want to make that clear, but analysts are expecting a 50% recovery off of this low base in 2024, followed by another 26% recovery. So using this 15 PE ratio, if you were a long-term investor in Yamana based on these numbers and you ended up seeing the stock trade at a 15 PE, now these are what-if scenarios, then you could make 11.72% annualized if you bought the stock here. But you should invest with your eyes wide open and recognize that we may see some further bad quarters coming up here in the next two or three quarters. And as a result, there still could be some more downside on the stock. But if investors are looking ahead, this could be a rather low for the stock. But I want to let you make your own decision on that. But here's the other point. If we use the normal multiple that the analysts have applied, about a 20 multiple on this stock, let's go back to the historical. And let's point that out. That 20 multiple is based on how the analysts were pricing this stock before we came into this particular fiscal year coming up now. All right. The long-term growth of the company is expected to be 11%. So if we get past these next couple of years, now I can go into the custom forecaster here and I can add estimates on this graph. And I want to point out that we've got some issues that we might face in the intermediate term, as I've already pointed out. But then beyond that, we could see growth going back, averaging 11% growth. And this could be a long-term investment offering 11.71% rate of return. Interestingly, until very recently, analysts had a pretty good track record, only missed estimates 8% of the time. And on the two-year forward, they actually didn't miss it at all. Okay, so we might have some confidence that, you know, these analysts are correct, but we still have to have the cautionary flag of why were the estimates so bad for 2024. And that's something that only comprehensive research and due diligence can answer for you. Going on, looking at some other metrics here on Yumana. If we look at their operating cash flow, since they are a dividend paying company, they definitely generate more than adequate operating cash flow to cover their dividend, especially with their payout ratio being so low. Only 8 or 9% here more recently, 11% last year. I'm talking about payout ratio of cash flow here. If we look at free cash flow, which is what they have left over, free cash flow still covers the dividend, although free cash flow has been a little bit erratic here. So the other thing I want to look at, I think just before I go on, is I want to look at sales because sales were certainly a better performing metric than the operating earnings were. But right now, the stock is trading at a discount to its normal price to sales ratio, and that could be promising going forward. But sales are only expected to grow about 5% over the next three years or so, 4.86%. So you want to take that into consideration. But going back to the all-important metric, adjusted operating earnings metric, we are in a situation where there possibly be some short-term issues. If you wanted to start building position in Yamana today, I would recommend being cautious for the short term or the intermediate term. But on the other hand, I think you're probably on pretty safe ground if you're looking at it on a longer-term basis. On the other hand, if we went and looked at forecasting calculators, if you looked at these comparables, if you looked at United Healthcare, for example, it's trading at a premium to its earnings growth rate. But if you gave it the normal multiple that the market likes to have about 21, this could give you an 18% return. I like this stock probably as well as any of the ones in the group, but I do think we still have a premium valuation on United Healthcare. When I go into elements here, and look at the forecasting for elements, I see a 12% growth rate, a 1.29% dividend, and a better 
return potential. The company's A rated only has 36% debt. So I obviously own this one over the other three, but you can make your own call. There's, there's opportunities in all these. This sector is the thing I've always liked about this particular sector is how consistently the earnings growth, and I think demographics really play a major role here. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. Just providing a subscriber request here and an interesting look at Yamana, which really had had a really horrible miss of earnings, and they're expected to really have poor earnings of only $16 in 2024, but hopefully they're getting their act together as analysts suspect. But anyway, this was um, Yamana. Do your due diligence, as always, and make your own decisions. If you like this video, give me a like. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and I look forward to talking to you in the next video.